Mm. Oh. Oh. Uh oh. Hmm. No. No. Dango. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Graz from the GKBC doing my uh, five day late um, update for Saga as part of my buddy read with Tad. I'll link his channel below. We've been doing this. Uh, this is episode five um, for issues 25 through 30 in book two here. Um, this section actually started really interesting for me. I got some notes here. Um, I liked the quick and dirty history lesson that we're given. Uh, you know, of why, potential reasons why the horns and the wings hate each other. Um, and uh, honestly, let me see if I can find the picture. There's a lot of stuff in here I can't show you. Mm hmm. But this is pretty cool. Revolution looks badass. They look really cool. Um, I like them. They're like a team of bounty hunters or something. I don't know. Well, they're not bounty hunters, my apologies. They're uh, freedom fighters, I guess, is the best term for them. Uh, and then we get to see this guy. It's a male stock. Pretty cool. Um, he's not quite as awesome as I thought he was going to be. Just kind of says his piece and then leaves. But I kind of hope we get to see him again because I know the stock's awesome and I know Tad really likes the stock. Uh, now, it's interesting because I kind of have that, that fictional character crush on Alana. But way to ruin it for me there, peeps. Uh, nothing quite like a naked... Pregnant preggers um, wanting to have sex, Alana, to dampen that crush. Um, but yeah, basically this, I, I mean, I'm not going to try and give you the review of everything because, um, I don't know, it just seems like uh, this Yuma, this other spider girl, Yuma, um, she's just a drug pusher. And she needs to go. And actually, um, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but one of my favorite things, and I do love the um, the uh, the revolution. They're awesome, and I love Goose, Goose, Goose. I guess he's he's really cool too. Uh, I mean, how he reads people and stuff. I, he's really, really awesome. Uh, I'm sorry, this is really riveting, I know, like always. But, this is great. Uh, Yuma's feeling sorry for herself as as you would if you're the person ruining other people's lives. Uh, and she's talking to Gus, and it's really funny. There's a little bit of subtext here, and it's really funny. I'm going to read it for you. Um, are you okay? Gus says, are you okay? And Yuma replies, no, Gus, I'm not. I'm a strung out, backstabbing, useless old cunt. And Gus says, you're not useless. So I I laughed right out loud when I read that because okay <laughs> everything else is true though 
Um, but then, you know, her Yuma uh, sacrifices herself in this amazing and hope. Well, I swear, people swear, but this amazing blaze of glory is really cool. Um, they had a fuel leak and it was too hot for somebody to go in there and Gus was going to sacrifice himself and Yuma knocked him out and went in and did it anyway, did it for him. Meanwhile, the revolution has predictably uh, backstabbed Dango and um, Alana and all them and, <laughs> and they are uh, trading Hazel for um, other revolutionaries, other freedom fighters to be released. Oof. So that was interesting. Um, uh, now, there's something in here that I really can't show you, but boy, did it blow my, not blow my mind so much. And, wow, no pun intended. Um, but there's nothing quite like turning the page and getting a two-page spread of a giant male dragon uh, um, orally enjoying himself. That was quite the visual. <laughs> um, and then, in a couple of pages, we lost two amazing characters. Uh, the brand gets just chopped right in half by the dragon. That's great. And then, um, you might have gotten it from my uh, intro. One of my favorite characters in here, Dango, uh, meets up with Prince Robot 4. And if you remember back when, Dango is the one who killed Robot 4's wife and kidnapped their son. So... He's all excited, and he and he and he, and he rushes up to to Robot Four, Prince Robot Four, and he and he says, "My, your Highness, this is I've been waiting for this. This is my boy." And he shows a picture of his son who died because of the cause or because of the war. And Robot Forces, fascinating. And then his, he does that hand cannon thing that he's so good at, and he bl and he just cuts Dango right in half, and it really bummed me out. I I didn't like that, but. Something good happened there. Marco and Alana are back together for now to try and get Hazel back because Hazel's gone. Hazel and Marco's mom got taken by what was left of the revolutionaries because Dango, before he died, took most of them out. He, he was a bad dude. So, but I'm going to tell you, don't get attached to anybody in Saga because they'll be dead. And I was kind of bummed out because six, six straight issues with no Isabel. Kind of hoping that she, you know, comes back. Um, so I kind of zammed through my, uh, my, my, my plot, my, my points there. Um, I'm, it's, it'll be interesting to see what happens now that Robot 4 has his son back. It'll be interesting to see how he handles having both of the people that he was hunting right there with him. Marco and Alana. That'll be very interesting. Um, oh, and Gwendolyn and Sophie actually found the proper ingredient for um, the potion uh, to bring the will back to life. So he's back. And he's very angry because he learned that his sister is dead, which was the brand. So this will be interesting. Um, I'm guessing the next six issues, which will finish book two, I'm guessing that those will have a cliffhanger. So that'll come in a couple of weeks. Uh, but yeah, I... It, I mean, I think Tad calls it beautiful chaos, um, and that's exactly what this book is. It it just it's everywhere. <laughs> oh boy, I'm not trying to rip off the Oscars, but it is everywhere, everybody, all at once. 
or whatever. Is, that's what this book, that's what Saga is, and it's so good. Um, but anyway, that's my review of Saga, uh, issues 25 through 30, episode 5 of my buddy Reed. Um, yeah, uh, so I guess since that was kind of short, I'll give you a quick reading update, such as it is. Um, it is March 16th that I'm filming this, and I haven't even finished five books this month so far. And that's not like me. I just, I got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I know everybody has things going on, excuse me, but, uh, I'm... I mean, this could potentially be life or death stuff, and I'm not using hyperbole. The hyperbole. Um, so it's really kind of wearing me down mentally and physically. Got a doctor appointment on Monday, so let's all hope good things for that. Um, but so I'm I'm. The two books I'm reading right now, because I do have three books finished, is Forget Me Not Cowboy, My Bodice Ripper for March, and I'm about, I'm at page 154, so right around the halfway point of that. It's not good. Not good at all. I can't wait to be done. I mean, seriously. How many forced, nervous, stunted, stilted, garbage romances am I going to be forced to read about. Uh, at least I have the other book that I'm reading right now, which is, the cover's way over there, um, but it's The Moonflower Murders by Anthony Horowitz. And I'm not even anywhere close to anywhere on that. I'm on page 125 of, like, 600. So, the daughter went and got it for me so that's the cover for that and it's actually a really neat cover I don't read them with the dust jackets on them because reading is hard uh, on books <laughs> um, and yeah it is hard but um, so I, I don't want to ruin the dust jackets when I'm reading them so but that's what I'm doing right now uh, so that's that uh, I guess until the next time I do a video, I don't know when it's going to be now, but until then, read more. <laughs>